history in the square goes back 20 years. Um, I had an office and an apartment in the Regent Theatre building in the Dome, which of course came down in the earthquake, the Dome collapsed. It has been said they employed me because I'm a pirate. I'm a poacher turned gamekeeper for them. Well, one of the jobs that I'm doing is looking at this area, the square, and seeing how we can enliven it and get it back to better than it was before. In the original Jolly Plan, it was um, a green square such as Latimer and Cranmer. And this was going to be called Ridley after the Protestant martyr. There was this concept of providing green lungs in cities, um, but very, very soon after the plan was developed, part of it was set aside for an Anglican cathedral. It became, I would call it, like a hub or a knuckle. It was a pivot which the city actually moved around. So the public transport came here. This was the transit hub for the tram system. It became the transit hub for the buses. And around that grew all the activities that, that people here grew to love, like the cinemas, the theatres, the bars, the restaurants, the cafes. It's where everybody came to meet on Friday night. So we moved to an era when we had big buildings, large footprints, um, and 95 uses. And when they closed, the place emptied out. If the earthquake hadn't happened, we'd have started to see some of the older buildings, like the press building um, and Warners converted into apartments and, and life would have slowly come back. How are we going to redevelop this area so that it becomes the lively hub of the city? We've got the library happening. We've got to resolve the issue of the cathedral. And you'd have to ask, six years on from the earthquake, is it appropriate that we still have a derelict site like this in the centre of the city? One idea would be that the church gifts it back to the city and the community gets on and restores it. It's not my job to dream for the city, it's my job to capture the dreams of other people for the city and try and make them happen. But we've been here seven days a week since the earthquakes. Mm. So you know it better than anybody. Yeah, yeah, we know what's going on in here and what everyone talks to us about. Who in their right mind at the moment would, would even consider buying an inner city apartment when there's nothing around. So that's the key to it, yeah, isn't it? Getting inner city living, getting, getting people the, here. The but one of the things we've actually started to discuss, because it's happening in the world and it's actually cheaper to install, is gondolas. Overhead gondolas, because they're installing them as public transport in a lot of South American cities. They've got one in London, they've got one in Singapore. A lovely statue there, first one in New Zealand apparently. <laughs> Fell on his head. Yeah. And now he's got a flat top. Yeah. I couldn't fix it. Thank you very much. Thank See you, you again. Yeah, See you again. Yeah. I just read a, an article about um, in Reykjavik in Iceland. Uh, they've transformed their youth culture by making sure that after school there's lots and lots for everybody to do and it's all sports based. Yeah. Say temporary ice skating right in the winter, skateboarding, all these things bring them in. There's the opportunity of creating a new lane or street that goes right down to the river and then co connects again with Gloucester Street. What, a new so chancery lane? A, a, a new chancery lane, but bigger. When you look at the black maps, there's streams run through here, so one of the ideas that's come out of the workshops is, could we open up some of these streams? Or if we can, can we introduce water anyway? All ideas at this stage, but working with the council on these ideas. We still have to dream big dreams. We still have to be bold and we still have to be courageous. Um, and maybe move a little bit outside the normal comfort zone of Christchurch um, if we want to actually make this an amazing space.